G'day guys. In this video I'm going to start the build on the Kyosho Scorpion 2014. As you can see, got all the parts laid out there from the unboxing. If you had a keen eye and you watched the unboxing video, you might have noticed these parts I forgot to uh, lay out at the end. <laughs> oh well, whatever. I was thinking of making this a uh, two-part video series for the build, but I think I'll just make it one video. Uh, most of it will be in time lapse. Uh, if there's any tricky bits, I'll slow it down and you know explain what's going on. And yeah, hopefully it'll be uh, pretty quick and not too boring. Alrighty, let's get into it. Alrighty, so we've opened bag A and the plastic bag. So we'll start assembling the, the front of the chassis. So I'll grab a rail and they both look the same. There's no uh, like your javelin and whatever where they have a, a screw offset. So they're both the same. So we'll start screwing some bits together. Alrighty, my first problem, 2.6 mil by 8, we have them, yep, great, but we don't have 2.6 mil by 12, we have 2.6 by 16, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know whether that's an upgrade, they've put a, you know, longer ones in or what, um, so that's, they were in part in bag A, so uh, hopefully we don't need them later. Actually, I'll look at better, try and find the best sides. No, they're both the same. Thought it might be shinier on one side or something. Yeah, I'm guessing they just found that these uh, the 16mm screws are going to be better than 12 I'm hoping that's the case anyway. Don't want to find later on that we need the 16mm somewhere else and they've put <laughs> the wrong one in the bag. Now I was going to split this video up into two, might make two parts or even three. Um, not going to bother, it'll be just one long video, uh, hopefully not too boring, um, but yeah, it's long. Alrighty, step two, get into the servo saver. So I'll trim these parts off the tree. Hmm. Oh, there we go. I was using the wrong tool. I prefer to use the tools that come with a kit straight away, um, other than screwdrivers and that. I could use, you know, some hoodie type, uh, you know, or your dynamite or whatever. You could use other tools with the hex drivers and stuff, but I just use these in the beginning. Use my other tools later. <laughs> All right, that one's done. Goes up this way, I need a couple of nuts on.
<clears throat> now I shouldn't have tightened these so tight in the beginning because we need zero millimeters sticking out the bottom. So that goes off a bit. So yeah, you want the, uh, the screw there flush with the um, nut. Back that one off too. looking pretty good to me now step three need this spring and one of these and an e-clip so you probably want to push down on that and uh, stick it in there we go On properly, beautiful. Now we're on to step four. <clears throat> so we need one of these and a long screw, four mil by 35. So stick that through here and a uh, nut. Servo saver can go on top with an eyelock nut. And there we go, it works. <laughs> so over here it says we've got a back it off quarter of a turn the top nut about there and make sure it moves freely which it obviously does maybe I'll nip that up a little bit it's looking pretty good to me so now we can go to step five. Move these pieces out of the way. And we're opening bag B. So sprung a bit of a leak. Ah uh, well. <laughs> Alrighty. Still opening bags. <laughs> Mm. 
Facing down. Goes a little bit. And this part. <laughs> So we're going to need a 3 by 12 mil countersunk bolt right there. And we need our 3 by 15 countersunk bolts. Where is it? Down here. That's right. Yep, four of them. So I'm just tightening these down a little bit at a time, trying to do it evenly. So I don't break a bolt or this piece on top or anything like that. So moving on to step six, we got the uh, the diff, the gearbox. Alrighty. So I need a couple of bearings. Slip our bearings on. One side takes a little bit more work to get on. <clears throat> Here I'm just using a rag for a bit of a cushion against my hand. 
using the side plate to push the bearing on. There we go. Make sure it's even. Not looking good. And keep an eye out in an upcoming video i'll clean this up a little bit more my bits and pieces ultima triumph um there's not much triumph parts on it it's basically just the body got some hpi wheels on there uh, but it's running the ultima pro chassis saddle pack uh, as you can see maybe through the window there's an old saddle pack battery in there i think it's nickel metal hydride i made it myself but i just don't remember what it is um so I'll give this a bit of a dust up. I've got some decals to go on it from MCI decals. Um, kind of Ultima, Triumph, a bit of a mix I, I got made up. Um, but yeah, it runs a 12 turn triple in the back. Um, goes pretty good. But yeah, I'll give it a bit of a clean up and put a, uh, I'll put a modern receiver in it and uh, we'll give it a run. Now it's time to put our motor in. Got the, the brushless one there. KV is higher than I would have wanted, but you know, I'm only going to run it on 2S, so it doesn't really matter. It'll be quick. Didn't really want it too quick though. So I'll take this off. There we go, gears are in line. Bit of grease. Put our cover back on, and that'll be about it for step eight. Now I'm using uh, standard gearing of course that come with the kit, so the uh, 31 tooth pinion gear and the, uh, what is it, the, uh, uh, I don't know how many teeth that is, but yeah, standard spur and a 31 tooth pinion. Uh, you can get the options for different gearing, which is pretty good, but I don't think I'm going to need that. Now moving on to step nine, we're opening bag C. So in step nine, we need the uh, the rear guard.
So they're having a lot of trouble getting getting the bolts into the end of the the bars there. As you can see, there's uh, no holes. Holes haven't been formed properly. So it looks like I'll have to drill them out or something. <clears throat> okay, so I made some holes in the uh, the bar there, so we'll give it another go. Just using this hex key through the center there, so it, uh, so when I tighten it up, it's straight. It stops the bar from twisting. There we go. Alrighty, now step ten. We can put the gearbox on. Alrighty, that's step 10 done. Okay, step 11, we're onto the shocks. So I've got the shocks out of the bag, out of the uh, box, sorry. Uh, better see which one's what. They're front. Yep. Alrighty, we'll start with the front. Get our little gaskets out. Now they are kind of hard to see. They can be fiddly little things. As you can see, I just try to push them down with my fingernail. Trying not to damage them, of course. <clears throat> Get our tools ready. And I'll push these back in.
No. Clean up in aisle one. <laughs> Do them up a little bit so the oil can still leak out and push the piston up and then lock them up. So that's our fronts. So that's our shocks built. And I'll have a look at the, uh, the adjustment on them. The front's supposed to be zero millimeters from the top, so that looks pretty good. I'll just nip up the uh, the bolts just in case. And the rear needs to be three mil from the top. Yeah, it's pretty good. Don't have to be that accurate. I'm never going to measure them again. <laughs> Just slide them up and down as, as needed. And that's it, now we can get on to uh, step 12. Hmm. The one doesn't feel as good as the other. Why not? <coughs> I think the thread's not that great in the uh, adapter there. Oh well. As long as it stays in, I'm happy. Alrighty, that's done. these out the way. Now it's time for step 13, the rear suspension posts. Which, uh, 
these little beasts right here. And add a couple of them. And a couple of them. Alrighty, so we need a 3x8mm, a couple of 3x8mm countersunk screws, and uh, a couple of 3x15s. And we have the taller ones. We got the uh, a short one and a tall one. The tall one goes on the uh, outside. <clears throat> I'm going to leave those loose for now because I'm going to put grub screws in the top to hold the rods but they do actually kind of hold it in there a bit stiff uh, if we put the bottom ones in too tight it's not real easy to, won't be real easy to get the arms on Yeah, you gotta leave those quite loose. Otherwise you just won't get the rod in. Okay, so now we can stick the rear arms on. Now we can tighten up the bottom screws. If I can hang on to my tools. Ah, oh, really? <laughs> hands just aren't working right today. That's one, so I'll go and do the other one now. So the right side seems a little stiffer, not really sure why. But yeah, I'd rather it move free like the other side. So after a bit of oil on there, they both uh, flop around much the same. Pretty happy with it. Now I can get on to fitting the shocks. <coughs> Thank you. 
There we go. Nice carry handle. <laughs> Now we can get onto the uh, the front front suspension. Now this part I got wrong. Uh, if you if you look here, you're supposed to line these um, little lines up on the bracket. There's some little lines. If I can focus on that, yeah. So you line a, a little line up here, a little line up on the side, and the uh, focus is gone again there we go um, so this rod the ends of it should point slightly forward like this I had them pointing sort of back which is wrong <laughs> so that's how they should be now we can get on to step 17 of the front lower arms All right, now we can open bag D. Stuff rolling everywhere. <laughs> Alrighty, so we can start step eighteen. Yeah, these are supposed to be 8.5 mil. <clears throat> Should I look at that first? A little bit more. Looking pretty close. <clears throat> and these need to stick out about 7.5 mil, so about there.
Close enough. Step 19. Oops. Yeah, thread lock. And I just need to stick out 5.5 mil. close Now we can put the front end together. And on the 22, we can put these big grub screws in the in the front there. So in this part, we uh, we adjust these. So we've got uh, three or four mil. <clears throat> Sorry. So I've got three or four mil between the tie rod and the chassis. Put it up on something. Yeah. 
No lo voy a ver. <laughs> That'll do. Do the old rag. Always does the trick. Alright, so we can measure our 3 or 4 mil. So if I can hold on to it promptly. Got about 4 mil under the tie rod, so that's good to me. So we've got four mil on that side. That's looking pretty good. Get rid of that rag. Yeah, we can tighten them up. Then we can get into step 22, the front bumper. So we're going to need a couple of 3 by 8 countersunk screws. Now step 24, we're up to the radio box. A couple of body pin, body posts to put on there. Well, one for the body and one for the battery door. Grab a body pin so I can tighten these up properly. Now yeah, it says here you got to use the spacers if the uh, servo is longer than 27mm and mine's about 28 and a half, so I'm using spacers. Alrighty, now then, now we get to mount it to the chassis, beautiful, starting to take shape now. Oops, there we go. <laughs> so now what I need, got my cap screws. Now we can mount our receiver and speed controller. And there's our receiver. And there's our speed controller.
I might put the speed controller in first and see how much room that takes up, which is quite a lot. It's pretty large. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be long enough. So I'll have to turn that around. Alrighty, step 28, which I've kind of half done part of already. <laughs> Put this piece on. going to fit over the fan. Oh, that's no good. I have to work something else out. Okay, so I've removed the fan from the ESC. Um, hopefully it won't overheat. I only plan to run it on 2S anyway. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. If not, I'll be looking for another ESC. Um, the smaller one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as it was, you know, it's not gonna, this part here wasn't gonna clear the fan and the, uh, the cover. So that's alright, we can stick this on here as well. It'll be in the right spot then. Fataba one, even though I'm not using a Fataba. It's the same size. Let me check that it fits first. Yes it does. Which brings us to opening bag E on step number 30.
Oops. Yeah, the screw for the servo is not included. Let's have a bit of a look in here. Yeah, they're pretty firm. in the center and uh, try and get this somewhere in the center Let's see if we adjusted it right yeah it looks pretty close Let's see if we can get this under here here we go yeah it's all kind of in the center And now it's time for some wheels. So we've got to glue the toys. So I'll let those set for a few minutes and then I'll do the other side. Wipe off any dribbles. Shouldn't really be dribbling this stuff. It, it's uh, it'll mark the surface really easily on the wheels. Anyway, I'm getting older and my hands shake a lot, so yeah, no, that's my excuse. <laughs> Oh, 
Like if this was only going to be a display car, I probably wouldn't even glue the tyres. Because you run the risk of, you know, getting lines and little marks on them. And I'll clean off alright. <coughs> hit that with a bit of acetone. Only a tiny little bit, that'll clean it off. Alright, a bit of acetone on here. And there we go. Beautiful. Now we can put the wheels on. Glue's all dry. Or close enough to it. <laughs> So I'll start with the front wheels, put the bearings in. help if I was on the right page, but I know I am. <laughs> this is the one. Now, trick with these is, because of the, the way the, uh, the adapter bites into the wheel, you need to stop the axle moving, so I just jam a screwdriver in it. And there we go. Start putting the cage together. Now the driver's head, I think I'll glue it together. It just fits together and it's pretty firm, but I don't want it to, because it's only held in by one screw, I don't want it to split up the center and look weird. <laughs> Let's put a bit of glue around it. There we go. Now before I get too far into the body, a bit of a, uh, Gotta make sure the, the car runs properly. Pretty sure it does. I gave it a little test earlier. Not on the not on the ground or anything, but a bit of a test just to line up the radio and stuff. You got the steering servo. The old fly sky remote. Yep, that seems to work pretty good. <laughs> so I'll do a bit of a trial fit of the body before I wash it up and paint it and stuff.
Yeah, it looks alright. It's a bit tricky threading the, the cage over the top, the body underneath, and putting the aerial through. Uh, me, uh, me switch came unstuck, but I've got to cut the hole in the back for the switch there. Um, yeah, so now I can take it apart and uh, start on painting a body. So instead of using the visor sticker, which is that one there, um, for his face I'm going to use some flat flesh colour on his face and paint the around here black and then try and make a pale blue for around the edge of the visor. So it looks like the box, you know, because the box art, he's got a, his face showing, he hasn't got a, a black visor on. So I'm not going to do it too detailed or anything, just a um, pretty quick job. So there's me driver head. Reasonably close to the box art, I think. That'll do me. He doesn't need eyes or eyebrows. <laughs> now we can get on to painting the driver's body. When I was doing the front suspension, I was pretty focused on getting the uh, three to four mil between the tie rods and the chassis rails. Um, I posted a picture on Instagram of uh, you know the, the half built chassis. There was a comment there saying you know the uh, the front arms are too narrow together. Uh, I need to you know move them apart or, or check them. Uh, and it turned out to be Akira Kogawa, um, the guy who designed it. Um, so yeah pretty honored <laughs> he actually designed the whole Ultima Optima series um, and the scorpions uh, yeah pretty awesome at least it's, it's good to know someone like that's watching my stuff you know pumps you up a bit so naturally I figure if I'm gonna listen to anyone I'm gonna listen to him So here I'm just painting the black over the driver. Now the reason I'm painting inside is because it's too cold, wet and windy outside. Alright, now I can get this masking off and uh, then I'll paint the yellow. Yeah, there we go. It's going to look something like that. Might fix these edges up and those little marks there. Before I go any further, I'll probably uh, just get in there with a brush. All I'm using here is some acrylic thinner on the brush because the paint's still kind of soft, so it comes off pretty easy. And that's looking much better to me. You probably notice the uh, the black bled through the blue a little bit in spots where it was lighter. I knew it would anyway, but kind of gives it a bit of a, a rougher look, like it's an actual racing suit and not just a plastic dude. <laughs> 
Now we can get onto the yellow. So what I'm gonna do with the yellow is I'm gonna start with PS6 because it's you know pretty bright, very close to the, the right colour. I'll move this stuff out of the way. Yeah. On a camera it looks very close. Um, but it's actually uh, the plastics are actually a little bit darker. So I'm gonna do probably one try and do one or two very even coats with the PS6 and then I'll back it up with some camel yellow PS19. Alright so that's two coats and as you can see I um, need to get a little bit more into the back there and around the edge is pretty thin so I'll probably just uh, you know spray it up that way the sides and the the front are pretty uh, even so it's kind of two thin coats as you can tell the colors not very close it actually looks closer on camera than camera than it really is um, this kind of looks a little bit blue but then of course you got to keep in mind it's still got the film on it um, so the color is not going to be perfect but underneath well it looks pretty good but yeah in real life it doesn't look that close so spray a bit more in here and then we can hit it with the camel yellow all right now we're ready for the camel yellow it looks reasonably even let's do it so there it is with the camel yellow one colors looking pretty close to me looks very dark on the underside of course but what we do here we've got a, another special trick we'll hit it with PS6 on the inside again then no one will know ever how we did it <laughs> so there we go all done same color on both sides beautiful pretty happy with the color as I say it doesn't really come up properly on camera but I'll try and get it in some good lighting maybe uh, take some shots outside or something in the daylight and uh, we can see how it looks alrighty I'll let that dry and then I can take the film and stuff off and uh, fit up the cage alright we'll get this film off so because uh, I'm pretty keen to see how it turned out Yeah, it's looking pretty good to me. Bit of a mark there and a bit of a mark there. What do you do? And it looks like I had some black overspray at the back. Ah well. But the colour I think looks pretty good. Maybe not perfect, but you know, it's pretty good. Alright, the next step, 36, put on the decals, or stickers, whatever you like to call them. Um, because I painted in here, I don't need to use all these ones, uh, but I will use the belt parts. Alright, now step 37, we can put the cage and the driver's head on. <coughs> so 
So now onto the final step, putting the body on. I've already put the battery door on. And that's it, it's all finished. So that's it, it's all completed. Ready to run. <laughs> so I'll probably get it out this week, I hope. Maybe get in the beach or something. So there it is, all finished. Very happy with it. It was a pretty simple build. Um, went pretty smoothly. Uh, probably the hardest part was um, editing the video <laughs> so uh, yeah, if you like it leave a thumbs up and uh, subscribe and all that other business and I'll see you on another video in the meantime I'll leave you with a little video montage <laughs>